Chapter 410, A Leisure Week In the drizzling execution ground, Lumion watched as the crimson flames gradually dwindled before his eyes. He observed as translucent, colorless mucus seeped out of the corpse. It surrounded the charred and cracked I know someone, attempting to burrow into his head through the empty eye sockets and fuse with some organ. Crimson fire ravens materialized around Lumion darting through the remaining blood-red eyes before the slime could reach its destination. <sniffs> Rumble. I know someone's head exploded from the inside out, splattering grayish-white colloids everywhere. The transparent, colorless mucus had lost its binding substance, leaving it only able to condense independently, eventually forming a sticky colloid. This colloid landed beneath the stake. From a distance, it resembled an unfixed mirror, capable of reflecting everything around it. Lumion strode over and retrieved the colorless colloid, which was likely a hypnotist beyond her characteristic. He did this amidst the scorching air and the flames that flowed around him. As he gazed upon it, he noticed minuscule transparent bubbles deep within the colloid. They caught and refracted sunlight from various angles, displaying an array of colors. After storing away the beyonder characteristic, Lumion turned on his heel and departed from the stake. Behind him, the lingering flames continued their relentless assault, devouring the charred corpse. As the light flickered, Lumion's figure vanished from the Roy Comprehensive Execution Ground. In apartment 601, 3 Rue de Blue Blanche, in the Market District, Lumion, who had reverted to his original form with a lie earring, rubbed his temples and turned to Franca. It's already taken care of. It's fitting for someone like him to meet his end at the stake. Unfortunately, he's a believer in the celestial worthy. Even if he doesn't take action, he remains a hidden threat, a potential time bomb. Otherwise, I would have spared him, albeit with his frontal lobe removed and his sight forever gone. Renka breathed a sigh of relief. That's reassuring. In truth, she felt a twinge of regret, if not for the insanity that had gripped I know someone in the past and his faith in the celestial worthy of heaven and earth for blessings who was suspected of triggering their transmigration, she might have attempted to channel his spirit and inquire about the potion formula for the spectator pathway, from sequence 9 down to sequence 6 or even sequence 5. However, after thorough contemplation, she decided to forsake this perilous scheme. Lumian's gaze shifted to the open door of the guest bedroom. Where's Jenna? She's gone to the theater that Lansa and Keja Pigeons, Franca taunted Lumian. She's much more diligent than you in digesting the potion. Lumion replied thoughtfully. After venting the flames within me to battle and carry out the execution, my pyromaniac potion has significantly digested. At this rate, if I can distill a new acting principle, it should be fully digested within two months. He didn't dwell on the subject and continued. I intend to share I know someone's beyond her characteristics with Madame Magician. Without her and the Terra Club's support, we might have lost track of our target or lost control during our initial assault. No problem, Franca replied without hesitation. The beyonder characteristics of these followers of the evil god have eluded the grasp of high-ranking individuals. I wouldn't dare to possess them myself. There's no need to think about repaying me. Dealing with I know someone is also a mandate from the Curly Hair Baboons Research Society. Lumian didn't stand on ceremony. He observed as Franca returned to the bedroom changing into a white lace-adorned shirt and slim beige pants, seemingly preparing to go out. Where are you off to? Lumion asked casually. Franco responded with a hint of annoyance. I've been caught up in all sorts of messes you've stirred up lately, and I haven't had a moment to pleasure myself. Now that it's finally settled, it's only fair that I take a break, right? I suggest you behave yourself for the next few days. Lumion couldn't help but smile as the demoness of pleasure slipped on her boots swung the door open, and left. Once the door slammed shut, Lumion, who had originally planned to return to Alberge de Cocteray to write to Madame Magician, grabbed a pen and paper from the nearby table. He meticulously jotted down all the information I Know Someone had given him. He then neatly folded the paper and placed I Know Someone's hypnotist beyond her characteristic on top of it. Summoning the doll messenger, Lumion patiently waited. Before long, the doll messenger returned, carrying the translucent colloid and a square piece of folded paper. Madame Magician's reply read, This, this is, is a shared, shared mission, mission of the Terra Club. Club. 
There's no need for a reward. Keep it for yourself. I've already removed the corruption that could be removed. We'll mobilize various resources to search for the whereabouts of the remaining five April Fool's members, but we currently lack a solid lead. The pranks mentioned in the information have been ongoing for too long. Lumion finished reading in silence, allowing the crimson flames to consume the paper in his hand. He longed to teleport directly to Fena Potter's Gaia province and the southern continent's West Balaam to personally hunt down the suspicious April Fool's team members, such as Bard. However, he knew it was futile. Without sufficient information or clues, it was like searching for a needle in a haystack. He couldn't rely on the ice cream eating boy's luck every time, could he? All I could do now is wait for the Terror Club to uncover useful leads. The only person I can track down at the moment is the publisher of the underground book, Emperor Roselle's Secret Chronicles. If only they had met with the real author, Bard. Lumion felt a mixture of disappointment and relief. He planned to take his time with the hypnotist beyond her characteristic. While he searched for a suitable artisan, he waited for Anthony Reed to investigate General Philip's widow. If the psychiatrist gained something and succeeded in curing his psychological issues, Lumion wouldn't mind selling him the hypnotist beyond her characteristics and splitting the proceeds with Franca. If Lumion found a suitable artisan before that, he would designate the mystical item he crafted as a common resource, allowing Franca, Jenna, and the others to use it as they saw fit. After tucking away the hypnotist beyond her characteristic in a concealed pocket, Lumion exhaled and leaned back in his dining chair. Only then did he hear the growl of his stomach and realize his hunger. Since waking up at 6am, he had been engrossed in the interrogation, execution, and letter writing, completely forgetting about breakfast. Honestly, leaving me alone here? It's as if I live here, Lumion mumbled to himself as he got up and ventured into the apartment's kitchen to see what ingredients were available. Scanning the area, he spotted a few potatoes. Lumion was momentarily surprised, but quickly rolled up his sleeves and grabbed an apron hanging nearby. With skillful hands, he peeled, washed, and thinly sliced the potatoes into fine strips. Following the process, he ignited the stove, heated a pan, added oil, sautéed, and tossed in the shredded potatoes. He seasoned the dish accordingly. Once it was ready, Lumion toasted two slices of bread and poured a glass of milk. Sitting down at the dining table, he sandwiched the crispy shredded potatoes between the slices of toast and savored them, occasionally taking a sip of milk. Outside the window, the drizzle had cleared and the sun beamed brightly. During the following week, Lumion made the most of his time. He patiently awaited the recovery of his mental damage from the past two battles taking the opportunity to act as a pyromaniac and gradually digest the potion. In the midst of this process, he also managed to report to Mr. K about his recent activities and the discovery of the evil god organization. Members of the Savoy mob in Saw the Babris were surprised. Their boss had unexpectedly appeared for five to six consecutive days and had stayed for extended periods each time. Compared to their previous experiences of him being unavailable, it was as if he had found a double. Charlie was equally astounded. CL frequented the basement bar every night to drink, tease, and taunt people, making him the prime target of his unusual dedication. Just as Franco was about to revisit Trocadero's Red House Cafe and discreetly remind Brown's Sauron not to forget auditing her, Gila's pure silver skull sent out a notice of a special gathering to apartment 601 at 3 Rue de Bleu Blanche and Lumian's abandoned safe house on Rue de Bleu Blanche. It had been a while since Lumion had visited the safe house. If Franca hadn't inquired about the letter upon receiving it, he might not have been aware of it. Many members of the Curly Hair Baboons Research Society operated in a similar fashion. They had designated locations for receiving and sending letters, but did not actually reside there. They only visited periodically to avoid detection by Gila, finding comfort in these small details. Lumion arrived at the abandoned safe house on Rue de Blue Blanche and carefully unfolded the letter. Its contents read, Muggle, there's, there's a special, special gathering scheduled for 10 tonight. tonight. We, we need to discuss something of utmost importance that concerns everyone's safety. At night, just three minutes shy of 10 o'clock, Lumion recited the incantation imbued with concealment powers within the confines of the safe house on Rue de Rosignol. Gradually, he felt himself sinking into a profound slumber the sensation akin to his body being erased by an enormous eraser. 
After an indeterminate period, he suddenly regained consciousness and found himself standing amidst an ancient palace enveloped in the misty shroud of a town. Over a hundred members of the Curly Hair Baboons Research Society had already assembled, their figures still taking shape. Navigating through what resembled the Grand Masquerade Ball venue, Lumion, now transformed into Aurora using Lai, wore a warlock's black robe and half-mask as he approached the academy team. He scanned the area, but didn't spot the member known as Pettigrew. Standing beside a slender man with a brownish-yellow manila document bag obscuring his head was Professor, adorned in a black butterfly mask, a bow-tie shirt, and a long dark coat. It was her husband, Associate Professor. Professor regarded Lumian with curiosity and inquired, Do you know what's happening? Why did they convene this special gathering? Lumian, taking on the persona of Muggle Aurore, smirked and let out a sigh. Ah, <sighs> because we have traitors among us. Traitors. Professor and the other members of the academy team echoed the term. At that moment, the half-giant president, Gandalf, attired in a simple robe and hood, and the vice president, Gila, who appeared as a black widow with her face concealed by a veil, made their way to the massive stone throne situated deep within the ancient palace.